Hey gang, welcome back to uh, Big Bone. I thought I'd uh, run through a kind of a trial combat, if you will. So we're up uh, just south of Heraclea here, and there's a pass that runs through some rough terrain. And there are these three dudes here, and they're in battle formation. Let's uh, get the glare out of there and zoom in a little bit. So I have a combined uh, combined defense of uh, 5 plus 4 plus 3 is 12. And then I've got, you know, this honking big army here. There's a bunch of dudes with sarissas, and then there's heavy foot. So, so we've got um, four sarissa units, phalanxes basically, three heavy infantry, probably hoplites is what you would call them, and two heavy cav. Um, and in this particular instance, you would think, yeah, you want to have combined arms, right? Not necessarily the case here. So, uh, excuse me. So what we do is for every unit, and this is Philip's army, so I'm just going to put Philip here and there's no command here. And there's this hex just here. Let's screw it up a bit. Right here. And my guys ended their move right there. Oh, and there's another D. I remember what we, what we would get. Uh, but we're going to ignore that because I've already worked all this out and I want to talk through it. Uh, what the actual result is doesn't matter. We're not actually going to do this attack anyway, uh, even though it would have been worthwhile doing. <clears throat> but there's a small force defending the pass and, the, and a large force attacking it. And given the confines and constraints of uh, attacking through a pass, we can see how cavalry wouldn't be valuable so we really probably should have uh, taken the cavalry out of the equation which would have dropped the combat factors down by nine which in actual fact would have brought the odds down to eight to one but the table maxes out at six to one so we would say hey you know we're gonna we're not we, we're not going to use those guys and in fact what i would probably do is work out exactly what i need to go into here uh it doesn't seem to be any rules against working out your odds and looking at the enemy's stack. So if I had 12 here and I wanted 6 to 1, I'm going to want to get around 70 factors in on the action. And so I would I would just pick enough enough to get me to 6 to 1. So I want to advance into this hex to attack. Uh, before I do that, though, I'm going to do morale check with every dude. Uh, this is their morale number. Now, it's 2d6 uh, plus the plus a DRM for the leader of three. So in essence, you know, nine plus three is 12, eight plus three is 11. None of these guys can really fail. I rolled the dice for these two chaps and they passed. Everybody went in, so that's cool. These guys also passed their four, six, and seven rolls. Uh, so they all participated in the combat. So that means everybody's participating in the combat. Now there's another feature that you can run, run here is where I can say, uh, I want to add this cavalry into the attack and I might want to do that. And so I, I move this dude in and then he'll say, well, gee, I want to add these guys into the attack as well because they're adjacent. And if I had another army here, they can move in. He could kind of pile in guys from additional hexes. Everyone has to make a morale check and everyone has to, if you're, if you're, you don't have a leader, you've got to be in battle mode, which is flipped over. So this dude couldn't participate in this particular attack. If you had a leader with him and he was in move mode, then he could participate. Okay, fine. So that all makes relative sense. So then we get to the point where we need to choose a stratagem. And the stratagems for the defender are thus counter assault, hold, or withdraw and for the these dudes for the attacker it's probe engage and assault and so you pick one and then declare it at the time uh, uh, that you're going to roll for the result and then you look it up on the table and see what happens final thing you do before that though is look at terrain leadership and any sort of tactical stratagems you might like to apply and i'll show you how they work so terrain is very, very nominal uh, impact here. And uh, there's a minus one DRM and a minus two DRM for two types of terrain. Uh, let's see. So we're going to go, I may have to zoom out here. Here we go. Whoa. 
Oops, I almost dropped the camera. Where are we? Here, okay. So here we have the tactical stratagems. Leader uh, with an A rating can roll a die and Philip gets a plus one because he's Philip. And uh, minus a DRM. So there's no leader, there's no leader for the defender, so it is what it is. But we get a positive DRM, we rolled a, a, one, a, a five, a four or something like that, and we got a, a five, <coughs> so we get a positive DRM. Net result of all the changes. Oh, and then there's a variety uh, of units involved in the attack DRM, and uh, any, any amount of different types of units over one will get you a positive DRM, and then you net those out against both sides. So the you know in the wash we're subtracting minus two from the die roll, and I rolled uh, so I rolled a net three. Uh, you can see over here on the left hand side. Here's the three. Here's the six to one odds, and the stratagems I had were withdraw, hold, or counter assault. And let's let's uh, now let's sort of dig in here and check and check this out. So, oh hello, cat. Let me guess. You want to go outside? I just let you outside. Which one are you? I just put you out. You little. This is gonna be like uh, running around the house. Sorry. Go on. Okay. Let's see if I can remember where we were. Brain like a sieve lately. So, depending on which stratagem I would have chosen and what uh, the attacker chose is going to make a big difference. So, if I had chosen to withdraw and the attacker was using a probe attack, uh, the defender would take 50% losses. Uh, if, the, uh, if the attacker was using engage, it would be 100% losses and also assault 100% losses. But here's where it gets a little bit interesting. Look down here. If I had, uh, with my measly 12 uh, factors, uh, said I was going to counter assault, I would have taken 75% losses and no losses for the, uh, for the attacker. But... 25% losses for the attacker, and I'll explain how those losses are calculated in a second, uh, and 100% losses for both for both, <laughs> for both uh, engage and assault if these guys were assaulting. But you can see, look, there's a 50, can you see that there are 50% uh, losses. If, I, if the attacker is assaulting, he would take 50% losses if these dudes counter-assaulted, even though they lost 100%. Now, combat losses are a function of the person you're attacking's defensive strength points. And in this case, that was 12. So it would be 25% of 12 or 50% of 12. So I'd have to lose, in this case, uh, the assault. In assault, I would have to lose 6.2 or um, 6.2, six uh, factors. But if we go back over here and look at my units, They're twelves, tens. So I'm gonna to have to take. A, I'm gonna to have to pop a loss, right? Similarly, if it had been under that, uh, let's say it had been a hold, and I was pr and the attacker was probing. There's a ten percent loss, uh, or a twenty five percent loss. Twenty five percent of twelve is two point four. I have to lose two factors. Well, I still got to lose a unit. So that's kind of curious here that there's no granularity, there's no ability to that I can see anyway uh, to to in, in have some sort of step loss. So you you lose a unit. So the result ends up being the same regardless of whether if I was uh, holding or counter assaulting and the attacker was probing, engaging, or assaulting. Regardless, I've got to lose up to six points and a minimum of 1.2 points. So no matter what, I'm always going to lose one, one step. Now, that seems like, you know, this, this chart, let's look at this chart, okay? So 
Sorry for the flying screen there. So let's look at this chart. <laughs> two to one, three to one, four to one, five to one, six to one. Where's the uh, where's the other table? Must be on the other side somewhere. Yeah, here you go. And look. One to five, one to four, one to three. Why why does it go all the way to one to five? Well, who's gonna attack at one to five? Well, at one to five with a ten, you can still get pretty nifty you can inflict uh at a one to five, if I was being attacked, I would take seventy five percent losses and inflict twenty five percent losses. This really promotes uh some odd situations. That's if I got a ten. That's a D six of die roll, so I had to get a plus four modifier. Which would be pretty hard to do. Let's say a three or a four. Yeah, then you now the attacker's starting to lose everything. But it's he's losing a hundred percent of the defender's number. And they're attacking a one to five. So yeah, they're gonna lose everything. Okay, well maybe it does make sense. Seems a little odd to me. This this seems like uh, no matter what no matter what, I gotta lose a unit. Now at ten percent, you don't lose a unit. Right, you can ignore the ten percent ratio for the attacker. You can ignore the ten percent, but if I had if I had to use that heavy cavalry, I would have to take a heavy cavalry step loss. <clears throat> it could be a real beat down for the attacker here. So, anyway, I just thought that was interesting to take a look at and see how this attack would uh, would kind of resolve itself out. So these guys would, in essence, I think we said they would be wiped out. Um, I was actually doing a probe, so for the attacker, just to, for the experience. And the defender, we decided to do, we didn't really decide, but we were either going to do a hold or a withdraw. And either way, that's 50 or 75% losses, so it's pretty significant. So 50% of these guys, uh, that's 9 and 12 is 6 factors, so i got to lose 2, right? Either way, i got to lose 2. If it's 75%, I would have to lose all of them. This is an unusual combat results table, and I and maybe this is the first clear indication that this system is foobard. Um, I'm wondering if there's an alternative way to go about uh, resolving this. Maybe using maybe using the Carthaginian uh, and Punic War system from um, Richard Berg's Ancient World series, maybe that would be more appropriate here. This seems awfully deadly, but I don't have the ability to take step losses. That's the challenge. I almost feel like, you know, these now, I guess we can see if there's any sort of recovery or anything like that, but I don't see it in the rules anywhere. <sighs> Confusing. All right, there we go. We'll leave it at that. Talk to you guys soon. Thanks for checking the big board out. Later.